Hi, James from Livestorm here. Today we're going to take a look at how you can use Zapier integrations to have a certificate sent once somebody's attended one of your live events. So with this Zapier integration, we're going to look at a service called Certifier. And there are a couple of others that you could use, but today we're going to look at Certifier and see how you can set up a certificate to be sent to someone after they've attended one of your events. So let's just go through this quickly. First of all, here's Certifier, so it's app.certifier.io. So if you sign up here, you can have a free account to test it out for yourself. And there are a certain amount of certificates that you can send each month without having a paid account. But let's take a look here. There's a few different features here. So you can, of course, design your certificate and they call it credentials. So you might be looking for a certificate or something like that, but the terminology they use here is credentials. So a certificate or a badge is a type of credential that you could use to have that issued here. Let's have a quick look at the designer here. So you can change the backgrounds, you can add new elements, so you can upload your own photos, you can change the text font attributes, you can even add a QR code. The fact that you can upload your own images pretty much gives you the freedom to create any certificate that you like. Once you're happy with the certificate design, you can save that there. The next menu item here is groups. So I've made a group called Livestorm and I've attached my certificate to that group and then I can have the certificates issued via that group. So coming into Zapier, apps and connections you can see here you can add a connection and what we want to do here is set up two connections one to certifier and one to livestorm and that's going to make it so that the integration can work so if we go to certifier so if you've used Zapier before you know that it's really easy a pop-up box will come here and it tells you exactly where to go in that specific platform to get the token so in this case it's setting developer access tokens so if we come back into the certifier dashboard and we click on settings and then we click on developers access token I've already generated one here but you can see generate access token and then we'll just give it a name I've already given it a name before so Livestorm 2 continue okay it's generated my token there and we can see that's my access token so we can copy that so if we come back into Zapier here the second app that you'll need to set up is Livestorm and that'll do exactly the same thing, a pop-up box, and that's part of the authentication process. Okay, so with that set up, we have Certifier and we have Livestorm. We're ready to create our Zap. So all we need to do is come in here, My Zaps, and we're just gonna run through this. It's very simple to set up. Create, New Zap, and the first thing we need to do is set up a trigger. So in this one, the trigger will be when somebody attends a Livestorm event and we can search for all of the apps here. So the first one we need to search for is Livestorm and we can select Livestorm. Trigger event. So the trigger event is the list of things that will happen in Livestorm for this app to be triggered. So you've got registrants didn't attend event, uh, registrants watched a replay. So maybe you've got a scenario where you want a certificate to be sent if somebody's watched a replay and there's also a new registrant which wouldn't really fit the purpose here too well so what we're looking for is registrants attended and the second thing we want to do here is select our account so I've already set up this account and that was previously in the app section so we can see there that it's found my Livestorm test account because I've already set it up in the app section so we'll select that so we can go continue and the next little menu option here is configure so what we want to do here is filter by events. So I want this certificate to be sent if someone attends a specific session of my event. So coming into Livestorm, James test, that's the, that's the test event that we're going to use here. Okay, so we've got my event name there. So that'll be found in the filters. So filter by event, that's loading there. So that's just looking up all my events. And we just need to locate the event here, James test. That's the event that we want. And if we come back into Livestorm and see the sessions available, so how many sessions have we got set up? I've set up one in the future, so an upcoming event here is my learning course. And that's the specific session that I want the certificate to be sent to. So filter by session. And again, it's gonna look up the sessions in my Livestorm account. And I know that that's on the 23rd of October, so that's coming up next week. So I'm gonna select that specific event session. And then continue, and it's really good here. So you've got the test, so I can test the trigger and that's pulled up one registrant. So I know that I've got only one registrant registered for this event, and that's James plus test at Livestorm. So if I look at that one there, okay, James plus test at Livestorm. So that's fantastic. So everything's working there with the trigger. 
So I've tested it, it's pulled up my event from my Livestorm account. I know that the, the token is working and it's connected to my Livestorm account. So I can say select with selected record. Now what we want to do here is we want to check certify. So this is the action. So if that happens, so if someone attends the event, then we want certifier to send the certificate. Okay, so we've located that there. So let's just take a quick recap here. So registrant has attended, certifier, action event, issue credentials. This is the available list of things that can happen in certifier if you connect through Zapier. So in this case, issue credential, so as I mentioned before, it's not called a certificate in certifier, it's called a credential. So issue credential. Okay, and again, what we wanna do is just make sure we have the right account selected. So you can click on that. And as before with Livestorm, because you've already added the app into Zapier, it will be available here for you in this list. So certify work ID, and I'm gonna click on that. And we'll click continue. Now what we wanna do here is we wanna select uh, some fields, so maybe there's the name field or the event field or there's some information from the event or from the registrant when they register that you want to appear on the certificate. So let's take a look here. So group name, so that's in certifier. So previously we set up the group, so that's important to make sure that you set up a group in certifier and the certificate is attached to that group. So it's really good to give it a meaningful name so that when you do select the group here, you will know that that's the group and I've selected Livestorm there. So the recipient's name. Okay, that's great. So there is forward slash. Once you forward slash here, just as it says there, forward slash for field mapping. A list of fields will come up. So these are the fields that you have on your event for the registration. So the recipient name. So you can choose multiple fields here as well. So people first name. And then what I'm gonna do is put again forward slash and people last name. So what that's gonna do is it's gonna grab my first name and last name and then when the certificate comes through, it'll say my full name instead of just my last name or just my first name. So I'm happy with that. First name, last name. Now, recipient's email. So again, we're mapping the field, so forward slash. And we've got people email. And like it here, because I've tested, I can actually check that data field and I know that that's the registrant and that's my test account. So people email. Issue credential, so we want that to be set to true send credential we want that also to be set to true so it it looks like here you have the option to set send credentials false so possibly there's a scenario where you want all the certificates to be generated but you don't want them to be sent yet so you don't want them to be sent by email so if you wanted that and you didn't want them to be sent yet so that you can send them later you could set that to false but that's up to you so in this case for the purpose of this test we do want it to be sent to the email of the registrant so we'll set that to true and maybe there's an expiry date for your certificate maybe it's only valid for two years so you could put an expiry there and the other date here which i think is more important is the issued date so if i forward slash there so issued date so i think the best thing to have here is session ended at and that's going to give you the date of when the session ended so in this case the session hasn't actually taken place yet so that's going to be a zero there so don't be alarmed if you don't see a date because the session hasn't actually happened so there's no date in the system. You could look through this list and maybe there's a more suitable date for you. Maybe you just want the event date. In this case, I like it that it's got session ended. Just in case my course is postponed or something like that for any reason, I know that that's actually when it finished and actually when the registrant attended that event. And again, we have the opportunity to test the connection with certifier. So test step. So that's for my, my test registrant. That's got my name, first name, last name. It has my email address and the issued date. And I'm gonna go publish. So I'm happy with everything there. And the last thing we wanna do here is just make sure that this zap is on. So you can turn it off and on. It should be on by default, but just double check that you've got zap on and that's ready. So that means that if someone attends the event, then they're going to receive that certificate. Okay, so now that your event is finished, let's take a look in our email inbox and we can see here, here is your credential for Livestorm. And this is the email that's sent. Now an important thing to note here is if you do have a paid account with certi Certifier, you do have an email editor. So this is the basic email that's sent. 
So maybe that's not important for you, or maybe you would really like to get in and customize your email from when the certificate is sent so that it's got your company logo and it's got your words and you can really customize it so that when the person does receive the certificate, it's got all of your customized email there. So in this case, we're just gonna take a look at the demo and that's the out of the box email that certificate will come on. So I've tested, I've gone to my event, it's over, everything's working perfectly and this is the email that I receive. Congratulations, here is your credential for Livestorm. And we're gonna view credential and that will take you to the certifier website and we can see here that there's a few different options. I can share my award, I can add to my LinkedIn profile, I can download and there's also a nice little feature here to verify the credential. So that means that if someone shows this certificate to uh, someone else, they can come onto this link and verify the credential and it goes through a little process there just to verify that that person has actually attended that event. So we're gonna go ahead and download. Let's download the certificate PDF and we can come in here and we'll open that. And let's open that. And here's the certificate. So that's I'm pretty happy with the results there. Now I can customize that further if I want. Maybe Livestorm I'd like to have the dark blue and I would like to uh, have my own little accredited program badge. Maybe I have one I can add. Maybe there's a QR code that you'd like to add in there. The designer in Certifier is highly customizable. It's really user friendly. You can basically just drag and drop and make the certificate exactly how you want it. And the last thing we'll cover here is you can come back into Certifier at any time and you can see the credentials that have been issued. So this is my testing and you can see when the date was issued there and the status published, email is opened, credential is not opened. This is my most recent test, so credential is opened. So you can actually see who's opened their certificate and uh, engagement received or if they've added it on LinkedIn. And the beauty here is you can also come in and you can select that and you can resend it. So maybe someone calls up and says, I didn't get my certificate or I've accidentally deleted my certificate. You can manage your certificates in here and that's really good. You can view them and you can download them from there or you can export them or you can take the data from there as needed. So there we have it. That's how you can issue certificates from a Zapier integration on Livestorm. If you have any questions, please hit us up. Uh, if you need us to elaborate on something further or if you're stuck on something, as always, please don't hesitate to get in touch. Cheers. Thank you. Thank you.